Charlie, oi, Charlie, wait up. I could see Charlie Geek about 50 metres in front of me as I walked to school. I could recognise his walk anywhere. It was more of a stumble, like he was about to fall over. Charlie, I said, whacking him on the arm as I caught him up. Did you hear me? I've been yelling you for ages. Then I spotted the white headphones in his ears. Maxwell, he said, pulling out a bud. You've got to listen to this. He fumbled as he tried to put it in my ear, but I took it off him and did it myself. We stood for a moment, Charlie grinning widely as I listened. It sounded like the inner workings of a washing machine. Great, so what's this one then? Don't tell me. Is it, is it the small intestines of a blue whale? Charlie stared at me. Can you get audio of that? I rolled my eyes. I don't know, Charlie. You'd know more about that than me. Charlie glazed over for a moment as he thought about it. Then he shook himself back. This, my friend, he said, all dramatically, is the sound of the sun. I laughed. What do you mean it's the sun? We walked into the school grounds wearing one earphone each. Scientists recorded the sounds produced by the magnetic field in the outer atmosphere of the sun. And this is the sound the sun makes. Isn't it brilliant? He beamed at me. It just sounded like some random wishy-washy noise to me. How long is it? I asked. Charlie stared down at his phone. I've made a loop of it. So it's about two hours. He pressed play and smiled for a second. But then he said suddenly jolted backwards as someone slammed right into him. The headphones pinged out of our ears. Oops, sorry, didn't you see, see you there, Charlie Geek? Marcus Grundy walked past us. His teeth gritted in a false smile. That's all right, Marcus. No problem, said Charlie, rubbing the back of his neck as Marcus disappeared into the crowd. What did you say that for, I said. He shoved you deliberately. Charlie blinked at me a few times as he put his headphones back in his ears. I don't think so, Maxwell, he said, screwing the little earbuds in tighter. I was obviously in his way. He shouted the last bit. He couldn't hear himself talking over his stupid sun noises. A few people turned and stared and I tried to walk on without him, but he grabbed me on the shoulder. Are you going to come to Science Club tonight, Maxwell? Like you said you would. I waved my hand at him, trying to get him to keep his voice down. A girl in Bex's year, Claudia Bradwell, strutted over. Ah, you going to the science club with your special friend, are you, Maxwell? You trying to be a nerdy nerd like your boring sister? She strutted off before I got a chance to answer back. Her group of friends fluttered behind her, scrolling on their phones. I couldn't stand Claudia Bradwell. She'd given my sister a really hard time. I looked at Charlie, who was, as always, oblivious to anything that was going on around him. He pulled his stupid duck face, which he always did to try and make me laugh. When he saw I wasn't smiling, his face dropped. You are coming, aren't you? You promised. Last week he'd persuaded me that Science Club might actually be interesting because you got to do cool things like blow stuff up. But there was no way I was going now. I ignored him and walked off, but I could hear him shuffling behind me to keep up. We'd been friends since we were small but everyone knew he was a total wally. Charlie Geek isn't even his real name. His real name is Charlie Kapoor. I made up the name Charlie Geek because he's so geeky. Even some of the teachers call him that. Rather than get an and rather than get annoyed, he laughs like it's some kind of compliment. He's such an idiot. He didn't even tell he couldn't even tell when people were being mean to him. Right, come on, settle down, eight, eh? What's the matter with you lot today? Said my form tutor, Mr Howard, as we all sloped into class. Come on, bums on seats, Maxwell Beckett, that means you. Charlie rushed in behind me and dived into the seat that was next to me in case someone else tried to sit there. Which they wouldn't. I didn't look at him. OK, so as you are all aware, tomorrow is the school centenary ball extravaganza. What's it? said Mr Howard. There was a general whoop from the class. Yes, yes, I know, the excitement is unbearable, said Mr Howard, scrunching up his eyes as everyone began to chatter. 
believe me, 8A, when I say I really can't wait. Really. I put up my hand. Even I was excited about this one, and usually I'd avoid anything organised by the school. Sir, sir, sir. Mr Howard perched on the edge of his desk beside me. I had to sit at the front of the class so that he could keep an eye on me. Yes, Maxwell? Are oh, you bringing Miss Huxley, sir, as you date? Someone from the back row let out a wolf whistle and Mr Howard blushed. He'd been dating the Spanish teacher for nearly a year now, but I still like to mention it whenever I could, just to see his face change colour. Yes, Maxwell, thank you. Miss Huxley will be there, as will all of the teaching staff. I smiled and leaned back in my chair. It was my doing, the whole Howard Huxley romance. If it wasn't for me, they wouldn't be together. Mr Howard's face slowly returned to its usual shade and I put my hand up again. Sir, 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 Mr Howard sighed. What now, Maxwell? Is it true, sir? I paused for dramatic effect. Is it true that Jed and Baz are filming their TV roadshow right here in school tomorrow? I winced as every girl and a few boys let out a deafening squeal. Mr Howard glared at me. But, but how did you know about that? That's top secret. The screams got even louder when the class realised I hadn't just made it up. I'd actually known about it for a couple of weeks now, as I'd seen it on our head teacher's emails. I'd been sent to see Mrs Lloyd for being rude to my French teacher, and was told to wait in her office while she dealt with something going on in reception. While I was sit uh, waiting, I took a quick peek at her computer screen, which she'd accidentally left unlocked. One of her emails was open, and the subject title was Confirmation of Filming the Jed and Baz TV Roadshow. I read as much of the email as I could. My tummy flicked over. Jed and Baz's roadshow was coming to our school on the night of the Centenary Ball. They were going to be filming an entire show in our hall. I couldn't believe it. Jed and Bads were massive. Their roadshow was the most popular show on TV at the moment, mainly because they filmed in all sorts of weird places, like in someone's living room, or on a beach, or at an amusement park. And it was always a secret as to where they were going to turn up next. They were so funny, and they had live music and an amazing uh, competition where you could win holidays and cars and stuff. And they were coming to our school. I sat back in my seat just before Mrs Lloyd came walking in and tried not to grin too much while she was giving me a lecture. I left the office that day and managed to keep the news to myself until right about now. The reaction from my form was everything I'd hoped for. Hysteria! Mr Howard walked around the class waving his arms up and down and saying shh shh with such force he left a spray of spit as he went. OK, OK, come on, Ate, let's have a bit of carb, shall we? Yes, so you all knew, knew there was something special planned for tomorrow evening, and now it seems that surprise has been totally ruined. Hasn't it, Maxwell? I shrugged. Everyone was too excited to be bothered. I don't know how you came across this information, which was, until now, highly classified, but I suggest you stop sharing things, OK? You've had 29 negative points this month already, and multiple detentions. And as I understand it, if you get one more negative, then you'll be excluded from the ball. Is that right? I heard Charlie gasp beside me as I nodded. Right, so keep your head down and stay out of trouble. Do you think you can manage that? Mr Howard walked away without waiting for an answer. He was right. My parents had received a letter stating that if I continued to misbehave then I would be given a 30th negative point and I wouldn't be allowed to attend the ball tomorrow night. You'd better be careful, Maxwell. You don't want to miss Jed and Baz and the chance to get on the TV, whispered Charlie. I snorted. I won't, and anyway, they won't stop me going to the ball after everything I've done for the school. The school owed me big time for a competition I'd won back in year seven. I crossed my arms and Charlie pulled a face. He didn't look so sure. <laughs>